Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft, and we are going to make a traditional dagger scabbard. You're going to be amazed at how easy this is. Now, I say dagger because we're going to go with this simply because it's going to be easier with the camera shots. Cool point, sword, no different. Same measurements, same tools, same techniques. Now, on that point, we're not going to need a lot of skill, and we're not going to need a lot of tools. Again, you'll be surprised how easy this is to measure out and to form. Now, with this, though, traditional scabbard, we're going to sew on a rear ridge. That means we're a little limited on our decoration, but that opens the door to some very creative answers. We're going to go with just a basic, simple scabbard. But one of the big points is our measurements, because I'm a costumer. And like a lot of us, I love the swords and daggers. Love to throw on a suit of armor and go to a Ren Faire. But if I've got a blade without a scabbard, that's not going anywhere. All right, bigger problem. I've got a beautiful blade. Love it. Don't have a scabbard. Who's going to make this for me? How am I going to find somebody to make a scabbard that's going to perfectly fit with length, taper, guard, all kinds of things play into this? Well, the answer to that is us. We're going to make this scabbard and look at this fit. Less than one eighth of an inch play on our throat. We lay the blade on top of that. Could that not be a more perfect fit? And again, I know I keep saying it, but you're going to be surprised how easy this is. All right, anything I use in this video, weaverleathercraft.com or check below. We've got links there going to take you straight to the website. So this, like every other project, we need a pattern first off. Let's step over here, draw out this beautiful dagger, and we will make a beautiful scabbard to go with it. Now to save us a little time, I've got just a piece of copy paper here, folded in the center, marked a center line. This is by no stretch of the imagination, good, good pattern paper. But we've all got some, and it's going to work for us. All right, so first step, let's measure our dagger or sword, whatever we've got, right across our guard, widest point. I'm at one eighth of an inch. Uh, I'm sorry, one and one eighth of an inch. So since we can't see our center line through our blade, at the very edge of our paper, let's drop in. What have we got? A nine sixteenths and a nine sixteenths. Okay, we've got a little room for error here. So if you want to drop in exactly half inch on each side, it's not going to be a problem, but let's be as accurate as we can. All right, let's drop our paper right on the edge of our table. Therefore, we can let our guard hang off and we can get a good measurement. All right, easy enough on this end. Drop my tip right there. Very nice. Let's draw that in. By dropping that guard off the edge, it's going to give us a good, accurate drawing. All right, here's our measurements and they're easy enough and they work both for sword and dagger. So right here, I've got 9 sixteenths, which is nuts. I really could back up to a half, but let's keep it accurate, all right? So we're going to fold this over, and we're going to cut it when our pattern's done. It's going to make it very symmetrical. So with this, what I'm going to do, my first measurement, half my blade width. So I'm going to come out 9 sixteenths, okay? Secondly, we've got a bend here. It's going to work same for sword and dagger, but I'm going to give this 3 eighths of an inch for our bend. So from that mark, three-eighths of an inch. All right, one more measurement. We're going to sew on a spine here. I need a quarter of an inch there. My stitch line, eighth of an inch in, and I'm going to allow eighth of an inch for our bend. So let's add from that last mark, one quarter inch. Easy enough. So half a blade, three-eighths, quarter. Cool. Let's jump down here. Let's find a spot somewhere down here where it's an easy measurement. All right, right there, three-eighths of an inch. Okay, so from our edge, three-eighths. 3 eighths, 1 quarter. Let's draw that in. Okay, for our taper, we don't want a taper that's going to perfectly match our blade because as we bend this leather in, it's going to start to chew, chew up some width. So what I want to do is bring my taper out a little bit and then circle in. But one point, we're going to come out 3 quarters of an inch from the end of our blade. Therefore, oh, look at the pen. I just hate pen, but pencil's just not going to stand up. I bet I'm going to have it all over me here in a moment. Okay, so from our taper, we've got a fuller on this blade. Not every blade has one, but I'm going to come up roughly for a dagger about two and a half inches, for a sword about three and a half. So let's do this two and a half from our point there. There's our mark. All right, with a French curve. Notice I'm going to drop in a gradual curve, but that's going to steepen as I get to my point. There we go. Okay, looks pretty good. Now for this, let's fold our paper in half and cut that out. 
And there we go. Okay, so that's our main body. Let's save this because we're going to use this for our throat and tip. All right, so there's our main body. Looks good. Let's set that aside. Now, for our throat and tip, luckily, we've already got a center line here. So let's take this, drop that on my center line. Now, because it's copy paper, I can see my center line down here. Let's just draw a line. There we go, on both sides, five or six inches, more than enough. Now, with our throat and tip, I want these to be roughly equal width. But the problem is, as I start to bend down here, I start to lose some of that visually. So on our throat, I'm going to come out two inches and one and a half, and I'll explain that. With our point, notice I like a point on my throat, but an inset on my tip for one big reason. If I've got a point down here, this is the end of the scabbard that's going to get the most abuse. So therefore, if I've got a point coming in, that's going to dog ear on me. This incredibly efficient cutting, and you'll see shortly. But my point there is you can make your throat and tip any length you want. You could actually bring them down to where the two points meet, or you could put a band in the middle. All right, all right, I'm going to stop, I'll stop right there. But anyway, all right, so for our throat, we're going to come down two inches to our main point. So on our center line, let's make a mark at two inches. Now, I don't want a big tip here because again, this can dog ear over time. This is covered by our frog and we'll talk about that in a second. So that really doesn't get the abuse the tip does. But nonetheless, let's keep that a little bit short. So I'm gonna square, I'm gonna drop in a line one half of an inch inside of the end. One half inch from my outside point to my inside. Let's take our French curve, and again, any point, you can, you can do this any way you want, but again, I'm gonna keep that point a little bit shallow, all right? So let's cut this out. Okay, there's our throat, let's double check that. All right, well, that looks good. Cool, on our center line, everything matches up. All right, for our tip, a little bit more difficult, but in all honesty, Notice we've already got our curve for our tip here. That's going to be our inset. So down here, let's go. We've got a half inch here. I mentioned we're going to do two and a half inches. So let's simply come down two inches to our point. All right. Very cool. Let's lay this in. And again, I can see my center line just enough there. And let's draw this in. And there we go. Great pattern material. <laughs> okay. Nonetheless, all right, well, there's our tip. Cool, that's easy enough. Let's fold that over and cut that out. And there we go. Okay, there's our tip. Let's see if that lands nicely. And it does, good, looks good thus far. Okay, let's jump over. We're gonna add a Sam Brown or a button post with this. This is a design call. I'm going to go through both layers of leather, both the body and my throat, but that's gonna leave some metal on the inside. And if you're critical on that, you can certainly drop your Sam Brown in just under your liner, lay that in on your body, you won't have metal on the inside. The problem with that though, is this is only a two to three ounce leather, and we'll talk about that shortly, but that's not gonna be incredibly secure. But really, for me, I don't much mind that. I can't even hear that metal, because when we tighten this down, it's gonna draw in a little bit. But the biggest point here, and this has happened to me before, is with this, my sheath is in my frog. My dagger is in that. What can happen is over time, this can slide out and it's gonna leave me. And I'll never know that. It's happened to me once and luckily, the gentleman behind me picked it up and said, hey, you lost your, your scabbard. But, and a little bit embarrassing, absolutely. But a Sam Brown is going to keep this scabbard right in our frog. Now, what we can do, we're gonna drop this three quarters of an inch down because I can take this, lift one of my straps and that's gonna sit in there very nicely. When I draw it, it's not gonna pull out, but at the same time, I'm pretty secure that I'm not gonna lose, lose that. So we're gonna give that three quarters of an inch from our throat. Notice on that, nice, very, very even measurement. All right, so from our top, let's come in three quarters of an inch and make a mark. There we go, all right, let's draw in Sam Brown on that. And there we are, all right, we'll punch that later, but very cool. All right, everything looks good. Let's step over to our main table and cut some leather. Now, for our scabbard, we're gonna use two weights of leather. And in fact, this is two of the three weights I keep in my shop all the time. 
For our main body, we're going to use a four to five ounce. This is about maybe about 1.75 millimeter and then a liner weight. This is a two to three or about 0.8 millimeter. We could bump up a little bit for a sword, but I may not suggest it. This is a good weight for both sword and scabbard. All right, let's move our main body out of the way. Draw our leather over. Now this is a great leather. It's our Weaver Select and I love it. But what we want to do is I'm going to drop this in. Let's come down here. Got a little bit of a range mark there. So let's start on this end. I'm going to butt my leather or butt the top of the throat right against the edge. But I need a little extra because we're going to overcut on the outside of both pieces. This will be right to pattern. Same with throat. But outside you'll see why. All right. So let's trace this in with our scribe. Now this is tough for the camera to see. In fact, I'm going to have a hard time seeing it. But let's trace that in. All right, there we go. And then with our tip, I'm going to drop that right on that line because we'll bust that apart and this will be very efficient. And in fact, speaking on efficiency here, notice right here, I could really stack these together. I could probably get about six or seven sets out of this. Same over here. I can lay my scabbard in left, right, left, right, and out of a 12 by 24 inch panel, I might could get seven of those out of that. All right, so with this, let's go ahead and bust this apart. There we go, sounds like I need a new blade. <clears throat> Excuse me, one of, my, one of my points always, new blade every time, but let's work with it. All right, so let's overcut this simply by about a quarter of an inch on each side. And again, hard to see that line, but I've got about a quarter inch, maybe three eighths inch on that side. All right, on this, all right, we're already cut. So let's just cut again. About a quarter inch outside. That gives us more than enough to trim to our main body. All right, easily done there. Let's set that aside. I'm gonna mark, gonna mark my four to five with this and cut that. And there we go. Okay, had to add a little pin to that because I couldn't see that at all. All right, let's scoot that out of the way. Now with this, I'm going to add a groove line, top and bottom, on my tip, top only. Then I'm going to bevel again in the same places. On our outsides, it doesn't matter. We're going to trim those off. But I typically go with an eighth of an inch, and this is very thin leather. So we need to go very easy with our groover. We don't want to cut too deep, but at the same time, if we add too much pressure, it's going to ripple on us. All right, there we go. Got a groove on both. Now let's jump over here to a bevel. This is a number one. It's about the smallest I can use. And again, quality leather helpful here, but at the same time, we're not going to take off too much leather. Now that, that wasn't perfect, so I'm going to bring that back across and smooth that out. Nice. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing right here and right here. And there we go. Okay, looks good. Now, that's not much of a bevel there. But what I don't want is notice like right here on a raw edge, if I move my hand across that, notice how it kind of dog ears right there. Well, I don't want that. Even a small bevel is going to keep that from happening. All right. So let's take these, our main body, step over here, and we're going to glue these on. Now for our glue, we're going to use the contact cement, the leather craft cement. The white cement is great. Problem is it's water-based. So therefore, when we met wet form this, that's going to give out. So we're going to use an S18, and I love this. For us crafters, first off, smaller cans, so therefore more affordable. But we'll work through this, unlike a big quart. All right, so our first step. You know what? In fact, let's back up because this has been it's making me crazy every time I see it. I had this out in an earlier shot. The point there is that the way we're measuring our scabbard, it makes it very easy to work in a cutout if we've got something on our guard. But look at that fit. How clean is that? In fact, that scabbard, I've had that for years. Good durability here. These are going to last for a long time. All right, with our contact cement, let's take our pattern. I'm going to drop my point or my tip right down on my, on my main body. But let's do this. Let's scoot this down about an eighth of an inch, and you'll see why here very shortly. All right, so I'm going to scribe in the top of my tip and the bottom of my throat. And there we go, just enough to see. All right, again, the camera may not pick that up. Now, with my glue, let's get this out of the way. With my glue, 
I'm going to have to put glue on both pieces. I could always rough this, but really in this situation, it's not necessary. So with this new can of glue, a lot of glue in there. So let's back that out a little bit. There we go. Now, one thing we do not want is glue getting on our surface and then run our face across that. If we get contact cement here, it's not going to come off. It's not going to take dye or top coat. All right. So with my throat, I'm simply going to put that on the edge of my table and I'm going to rub off. Therefore, I'm not worried about the glue wrapping around, but at the same time, I'm not worried about glue getting on my work surface. In fact, there's some about to drip right there. That'll work for us. Let's spread this around right to the edge, all four sides, and then I'll fill in the center. And there we go, a little bit to our center. Now, two points here. First off, it's not a bad idea to keep a rag over here. Therefore, we can keep the glue off of our fingers and thus off the face. But secondly, with a contact cement, we need some good ventilation here. I'm in my shop, got a fan on one end in, fan on the other out. So it's no issue there. All right, let's jump over to our, our tip. Do exactly the same thing right off the edge. All right, there's our tip. That's glued. Now, with this, with contact cement, we're going to need to give this about 10, maybe 15 minutes to dry once it's applied. So let's set those aside. Now, when we jump over here, I can see the scribed line, not well, but the point is we backed in a little bit. So I can get roughly close to that line. Don't want to go over it. I could always lay some, some tape in there to keep that from happening. But really, I just need a line of glue, well, let's say about an eighth of an inch from that edge because we're going to stretch this when we form it. So that the throat and tip are going to sit down nicely. So with that, let's just get right up close. There we go, right off our edge. And then the same on the other side. So I'm going to do this side and our, our tip as well. And there we go. Okay, tip is done. Looks good. Now, again, if I don't get exactly right to the edge, that's okay because down here we're going to have a stitch line. But let's give that, let's say about 10 minutes, let that set. Okay, given that about 10 minutes to dry, so let's take our tip. And I'm going to lay that right into our scribed line. It's a little bit hard to see, but there we go. Okay, lay that in. Easy enough. Now, on this end, I want to be flush here, right across my throat. Yep, come back a little bit. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, let's press that down. And one big point here, glue on nothing but our project. That's what we're looking for. All right, let's flip this over with a good sharp blade. I'm actually going to use my body as my straight edge. So if I run my knife across there, very good. Look at that. Looks like it was die cut. This makes this incredibly easy because it's tough to line up a piece with contact cement because basically you get one shot at it. You can pull it back off, but that's going to stretch our leather out and it's a disaster. But if we overcut, cut to our main body, it is super easy to line up. Look at that. Looks great thus far. Okay, next step. We're going to hand sew this. So let's take our groover, and I've got this set at one eighth of an inch, and I'm just going to run this down both sides. And there we go. Okay, looks pretty good. That's a soft leather, so I might run that back across, smooth it a little bit. Now, we need our sand brown. So let's take our pattern, going to drop that down, mark our hole there, and let's punch that with our revolving punch. Now, right there, I need about the third hole down. It's a pretty small screw on the sand brown or button stud, so that's going to fit in very nicely. All right, one last step here. Let's slick our throat. So I've got a sponge here with just a bit of water in it. Let's run that across that edge. There we go. All right, I'm going to put this on the edge of my table. So therefore, I've got some good body behind it, and I'm going to go with my second to smallest groove there. And now pressure, not the point here. I don't want to press that down so hard it develops a lip, but I just need that to slick and round for me. Maybe a dozen passes, give or take. Okay, well, that looks good. Again, something your camera might, might not pick up, but now it's very smooth, rounded, and slick. Very cool. All right, so we're ready to sew. So let's step over to our quartz and knock in our chisel line. Before we get to our quartz, we want to look at this very quickly because this can be critical. All we're going to do, simply fold this over, glue it, and chisel all at one time. It's easily done, and our holes line up. 
The problem there, though, the alternative to that is say we're going to bump up our body weight or our throat and tip weight. Say we've got 45 here, 45 here. What happens is when we bend this around, wow, look at that, nice meat, isn't it? But when we bend that around, what we're up to now is about three-eighths of an inch thick. Chisel's going to go through. The problem is pulling that back out, all right? Second problem, though, is if we're going to go with heavier leather, what we really need to do is both sides separately. Now, that's a lot of work. On a dagger, not such an issue. But when we jump up to a rapier, that's 38 inches long. So it's going to take us forever to go all the way down and all the way back. But the bigger problem there is that if our, if our chisel lines start to get a little bit out of sync, this is going to corkscrew on us. Now, a little bit of this, a little twisting is not bad when it's sewn. But if it does 180 degrees, we'll never be able to form that back out. So let's do this just with some leather craft cement. And this is fine because this is just holding this together long enough for us to get a chisel line in and get our thread in. So with this one side or the other, I'm simply going to drop a bead of glue. There we go. Come on, work for me. I'm going to drop a bead of glue down my edge and we're going to clip that together. And we're going to sew that at one time. That alleviates all of our issues. So with this, these are just clips from the dollar store. And I, well, you know what? I guess they cost a dollar. Anyway, I use these everywhere. So let's bring our throat together. Get that as close to even as we can and just drop a clip on. Move down a little bit, maybe down to the bottom of our throat. There we go. And easy enough. I'm just going to clip this all the way down. Now, on the end there, I'm going to use a little bit of heavier clip because that's tough. We're bending that over pretty hard. We can wet that and bend it over. Ah, that opens up a can of worms. But really, too, we're not going to take our chisel right to the end, so it's really no issue. All right, with the Leathercraft cement, let's give that, I'd say, maybe 10 or 15 minutes to dry. Then we'll head over to our quartz, drop in a chisel line. And our clips are off. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, a couple of quick notes. First off, you notice I said we're only going to, to sew or chisel down to about half of an inch from our tip. That's because that allows that tip to flare out a little bit. And to me, that looks very period, very cool. Secondly, I've got an extra piece of cutting board. When these wear out, I, I can cut them up with a jigsaw. And it's nice to have cutting board pieces in varying shapes and sizes. But with this, since we've got a bow, what I'm going to do is run this along the edge because I've got to make sure that chisel goes straight through. I don't want to try to lay this down, lean my chisel over, and try to get a clean punch there. Okay, so with this, let's drop this on our edge. Going to use an eighth inch flat, one of my favorites. I'm going to start right on my incoming groove line. I'm going to butt my, my last tine right up against that groove line and drop my chisel right in that groove. Now, again, critical that I try to go straight through. It wouldn't even hurt if I leaned a little bit so I make sure I don't come out of my edge. But let's try to get that clean and straight. One more. That's a lot of leather. Okay, good. I got my tine hole showing through. Now, again, the big problem is not going in. It's coming back out. So let's just work that easily. We don't have much throat here to have to deal with. So get that out. There we go. Okay. The problem here is trying to ream out our holes. But good point there. This doesn't have to be pretty. It's going to be hidden. We'll never see our stitch line. All right, so next set, let's drop our first time, last hole. Now this is going to be getting noticeably easier because now I'm going through my four to five. So easier in, easier out. Now I'm going to work this right down to the end, first time, last hole, and then we'll come around our end. All right, coming down to our end, I'm going to jump down to a four. Now, when we jump down to less tine, it's a whole lot easier to pull this out. But also, we're going to start working around our corner here. One more, there we go. All right, got tine all the way across. Now, with our two, I'm going to step down to a two. And we're thinking, man, that's really going to be tedious one at a time. But what we can do is drop this in first tine, last hole, hit it lightly. Now I know where my next tine needs to be, so I can drop my first tine in that, second tine down, there we go, all right, and again, easier to work out, nice in our groove line. 
All right, so let's work our way around to our point. And our last two tines. All right, that looks good. So we're going to draw that right down to there. Very cool. Clean and straight, just what we're looking for. Going to make it very easy in our hands. So let's step over to our sewing pony, knock in a stitch line. Now with hand sewing, in fact, it feels like every, every segment I open up with a long list of information. Here it's pretty necessary. Now if you're up to speed on hand sewing, fast forward a little bit. This is more for our beginners, but you'll be amazed at how easy this is and how good it looks. All right, right off the bat. Sewing needles, hand sewing specifically. Large eye to accommodate our larger thread. No sharp point, we don't need that. In fact, that's actually a problem to us when we're hand sewing. Secondly, our thread. This is our Ritza Tiger thread. I love it. It's a braided thread, but it's got a light amount of wax. So as we move along, that wax is actually going to keep our thread tight as we move. Sewing pony. This is great. Actually, this actually swivels for us. The point there is that we can sit on this. Makes the whole thing very stable. The problem is, I want to put this on a table. I don't necessarily like sitting down because when this is at this height, to me, that's a very comfortable height for my arms. Thus, I can sew a long distance without tiring out. All right, we're gonna use a, a, a saddler stitch. Now, this is a back and forth stitch. It's my favorite. Looks just like a machine stitch. With this, our thread, we're gonna go four times our length. Now, here's one thing that we get a lot of comments and questions on. When I talk about choking up on my thread, now, typically, we're gonna go with a three or four inch tail on that. The problem is, say I'm sewing a 38 inch rapier scabbard, that's four, that's gonna be 12 feet of thread. So what's gonna happen is I'm either gonna have to keep pulling this way out every time, I'm gonna pull a little bit, readjust, pull, put, right? That gets old fast. So when I talk about choking up, all I'm talking about is I'm gonna pull that thread further through. Therefore, as I move along, I can pay that thread out as I go. So therefore, I'm just doing this each time. Makes it much easier. All right, so enough explanation. Let's go to our saddler stitch. Now, first hole, one needle. Easy to remember. And I'm gonna start, I'm right-handed, but I've got this to the left for my camera. We punched from this side. So if you think about it, this hole is funnel-shaped. So that needle, when I go to find it, slides right in. On the other side, though, that actually is puckered. And I'm really gonna have to try to get get a needle through there, it's gonna to be tough. But what I can do is come through this side, we open that hole up, and my needle from the other side is gonna slip right through. There we go, easy enough, all right? So first hole, one needle. Let's get through that and equal out our thread, which all that means is I'm just gonna equalize the length on that, cool? Okay, jumping back over here. What I'm going to do on my first hole from my left, my primary side, I'm gonna drop my needle in. Okay, let's open that hole up. Therefore, that back needle slides right in. I'm gonna push that through. I'm going to make an X, move my finger and my thumb up to the other end of the needle and pull that through. Pull it a little bit tight. There we go, I can feel that resist. Cool, all right, next one, same thing. Needle in, let's open it up. If I can find that, there we go. Make an X, pull it through. All right, so I'm going to get through here. We're gonna come back in here in a second and we're actually going to gauge how fast we can move with a hand stitch line. It's pretty quick. All right, there we go. All right, let's see how fast we can hand sew. Now I've got a small mark here on my spine. It's not big enough to see, but we're gonna dye black, so no issue there. All right, I'm gonna wait for my watch to get around to 10 seconds till and let's start. And we're coming up, 55 seconds. See if we can get one more. Of course, now at the end, I'm struggling. There we go. All right, so with that, look at that, two and a half inches in one minute. So therefore, hand sewing really doesn't have to be super time consuming. And because we've got a good chisel hole there, what we're doing is actually making that easy on our hands to sew. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna go all the way down to my tip 
We're going to tie a square knot in there, tuck that in the end, and it will be invisible. All right, we're getting down to our end. This is our last hole. So what I'm going to do, let's go all the way through that. It's relatively thick. There we go. All right, push through. Also, one trick. If I'm having trouble pushing my needle through, what I can do is I can take my wax thread. These needles are exceptionally good steel. So what I can do is pull down on my wax thread and with my thumb actually push the needle through. So therefore, I completely mess my fingers with our thread. All right. So on our last hole, I'm not going to tighten that yet. I'm going to back up one hole and just come through one side. Same on the other. There we go. All right. Now let's really crank down on that. Pull that in tight. Good. We're going to use a square knot. So all I've got to do, I'm going to start with my right to keep from being confused. I'm going to cross over my left. Then I'm going to circle around it. Okay. Basically a half hitch. Draw that in deep. Now I'm going to take my left, go over my right, circle around, and draw that down in there. Very cool. All right. Our knot, for the most part, is hidden. I've never had one of these knots give out. So with my knife, right here at this point, I never use that to cut with. So I'm going to drop this down in, and I'm actually going to pull the thread over the blade instead of pushing the blade in. Therefore, I don't cut anything. All right. Look at that stitch line. Pretty clean and tight. How fast and how easy was that? All right, let's step over to our course because we're going to hammer down our stitch line and bevel both sides. Now, when we hammer down our stitch line, in this case, it doesn't much matter because this is hidden. But when we hammer our stitch line, it's going to do a couple things. First off, it's going to close those holes down so we, th so we see thread and not hole. Secondly, because we added a groove line, it's going to sink our stitch line down in that groove Make it look very consistent. Now, with this, we can use a mallet. We can use the Osborne tack hammer. But you know what? Let's use this beautiful tool. This is one of our Jeremiah Watt tack hammers. Is that not old school cool? All right. So we're simply going to hammer that down. There we go. And that's going to flatten that knot out some. Okay, easy enough. Now I'm going to jump up to a number two bevel. Again, a master tools number two because now we've got some thickness here. We're not dealing with just that little two to three ounce leather. So I'm going to bevel both sides down to my tip as far as I can get. There we go. All right. That looks good. Now our next step is to wet form this. Looks pretty good thus far though. All right. Wet forming. There are two things we need. Super easy. But let's step over here, take a quick peek at those before we actually wet form this. Now, I mentioned that we don't need much in the way of tools. That's exactly right. This is my press. What I've got here is two by sixes. So therefore, I've got an ample weight here to press. But you're going to see what we need to press. We're actually carrying it with us all the time. No riddle there. You'll see what I'm talking about. But with this, we don't have to go this far by any means. But what I've got here, two one by threes on top of a two by six and a two by six. All right, right here, I've sanded this down. In fact, you'll notice right here it says up. That means that when I lay my, my sheath down or my scabbard, I'm going to use this side to press. Therefore, I'm not going to have any wood grain in that. Get a good clean smooth there. I've got a gutter here. That's going to take that spine in very nicely. So the whole thing is going to press evenly. We don't have to go this far. I mentioned that we're going to use some, some lumber from our garage. That's exactly right. We're going to use two one by fours. And in all honesty, I think that's about $3 worth of wood. But again, what I have done, notice down here it says face and up. I've sanded this down. So we're going to lay our scabbard down and then we're going to press from the top. Therefore, again, we don't get any kind of an impression or blemish. Last thing we need. This is our cutout or our blank. This is just, well, you know what? It's pegboard without the peg hole. So I guess pegless pegboard. This is great. All we need is something about an eighth of an inch thick that's easy to cut. A jigsaw do that no problem. Plywood isn't bad but it tends to bow on us or warp as it dries. So what happened is your scabbard will dry out like that. We don't want a banana, okay? We want this clean and straight, just like it is here. All right, easy enough. Let's step over here. I'm going to set us up to press this, and we are very close to having this done. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to soak this in our water for about 30 seconds. 
let that get good and wet inside and out. Then we're going to pull it out and let it sit for about 10 minutes to let that water wick in because we've actually got a little bit of weight here and we want this very pliable. While we're doing that, two good points. If you don't have a wood form, it's no issue. I can mold right onto my blade, but what I need to do is sand right to the end. I can put my form on my blade or my leather on my blade, lay that right on the edge, and I can press that. It's going to come out just fine. It'll look just like this. This is just a little bit easier. But the big point, we're going to have to let the form or the scabbard uh, stay on our mold or our blade overnight. We need a good 12, 14 hours to dry. So if you're going to use your blade, just put some good shipping tape over that. That'll take care of it. And also too, right here, I've got extra room and I've got the throat distance marked here. That's a big help to me. But really this is just so I can hang this up and let it dry wherever. All right, so this is getting good and wet. Now let's take this out. I'm gonna set this on my face piece up. We know that's smooth. So let's just set that there. Let's give that about five minutes. All right, given that about five, maybe a little bit more. Now we can dye, or we can wet form with dye. In fact, you saw on my form and on my form here, my, my press over there, I've got dye on that. We can do that. It's not, it's not as easy. It's a bit of a mess. But again, say somebody's birthday is tomorrow. We haven't, we're working on their scabbard tonight. Not pointing fingers. It happens. But, but we can wet form with dye. It's just a little bit messier. All right, so with this, let's take our spine and we're going to press down on that. And I'm going to press down all the way down, doing my best to keep that centered. Now it's going to get a little tougher down there towards the tip, but we can do that. And we've got a little help here in just a second. So let's do our best to get that clean and straight. There we go. Going to double check, make sure my point's in line. It is. All right. So let's take our mallet and I'm going to hammer down on my, my throat, my tip. I will here, but I'm going to go much lighter because we don't have as much of a surface there. So let's hammer that down, come down through here lightly, and then maybe pick up. There we go. Okay, so that's ready to take our form. Let's slide our form in. All right, right there. Perfect. All right, let's see. Our point's in line. Our, our spine is clean and straight. Very good. All right, let's do this. Let's take our slicker. Now, four to five, we've got a wide enough cut here for that. Up here, we do not. So along here, let's just run our slicker along, get a good slick, but also we're pressing that down. Now up here, what I can do, since my hammer kind of peeled out that lighter weight, I can take my, my burnisher and just hit the edges of that, kind of get those a little more straightened out. There we go, okay. That's ready to go in our press. Let's straighten that out just a little bit. All right, but thus far, looks pretty good. All right, let's put this on the floor and press this. Now, I've never had to shoot my shop floor, but this is, but you know what? It's gonna work. Like I said a while ago, we all carry exactly what we need to press this. So let's put our face to our face. We're gonna drop this board on top. Now, this is why I like a nice big two by six. I have ample room to move. So what I'm going to do here is simply stand on this and I'm going to work it back and forth. I want to be careful. I don't want to put too much weight on one and enough. You saw it slip a little bit. Well, that might give us, that might give that, that scabbard the opportunity to get off center. All right. So let's put some weight on that end, put some weight on that end. All right. We've got, got a good form going. So let's do this. This is hard. There we go. You know what? Sometimes it sticks and of course it won't now, but all right, let's take our form out, set that down, and now let's form that again. Back and forth, and I can feel this roll right to the edges. And there we go. All right, I can feel it starting to sit down a little bit. Good. All right, one more press. Set that aside. Let's drop our form back in. Already looks good, though. Great. All right, right to our line. Good, it's gonna fit well. And one more press. Good and hard. I'm gonna put my weight down on our throat. Work my way down. Put some good weight down on our tip. Let's get that formed in very well. 
All right, there we go. Well, that looks pretty good thus far, doesn't it? Everything clean and straight. Very happy with this. All right, so let's see how we did. How does this look? Well, that looks fantastic. Very clean and happy. Good straight spine on that. Now, very wet, still quite wet. So what I need to do is give this an overnight or maybe 12, 14 hours dry time. But also right there, we've got that cool little flare. Looks good thus far. All right, so let's just set that down. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go hang this up somewhere. Let that dry. We'll be back in about 10 or 12. Let's see what it looks like dry. All right, ample dry time. In fact, overnight, look at that. That looks great. Clean and straight right here. There's our guard mark. Perfect fit. Now let's try it with the dagger. See how that fit is. Oh, look at that. Look how little play we've got. Very cool. Couldn't be happier with this thus far. All right, we're going to step over here at our die, a top coat, Sam Brown, and we are done with this beautiful scabbard. Now, dyeing leather does not have to be expensive, time consuming, or messy. In fact, you'll see we're going to have dye on virtually nothing but our project, maybe a little bit on our gloves. But we're going to use a pro dye and, we're, and a dauber. Now, if we dip dye this, we're pretty much stuck with one color, we could add another. But that sheath is dip dyed. It's got a cool little design on it. Problem is, notice how my spine puckers in a little bit. That's because I didn't leave it on my form while it was drying, or long enough. Right here, no issue, clean and straight. But also, since we wet formed with water, we've got all kinds of options here for dye. Now that's an old sheath, used that for years and years, but again, look at the durability. Very cool. All right, so let's jump over. Now, what I'm going to do here, I've got a plastic bag down to protect my work surface, but when dye gets on that, it pulls, it gets slippery, it's hard to deal with. So just some cheap packing paper. If I make a mess, roll it up, throw it away, I'm out, nothing. If I don't, and you'll see, we can just fold this up and use it again. All right, the only dye I use, Fibings Pro Dye, it is almost infallible. Our, our black is going to be rich and deep. And a wool dauber. These are lamb's wool, and they hold a lot of dye. So let's start here. Let's just wick this on. I'll come back to my throat there because we need to spend a little extra time on that. There we go, looking good. Now, when we wet form with dye, we need to give this a good, well, probably six or seven hours. But since we're just adding our dye to our top grain here, oh, probably an hour at most. All right, we're coming up to our throat here. Let's dab a little bit more there, get some of that down in that stitch line. Very nice. Now with my throat, what I don't want is dye dripping down inside of the sheath. That looks very cheap. So with this, with our form, what I can do is kind of get some of that dye off and then come up to my throat and just run my dauber across that. That's gonna look pretty clean and tight. Very professional. All right, there we go. That looks good. Now. You know what? Let's just make sure. Let's just add one more coat to this. And our last coat, well, that looks excellent. And notice, too, like I said, dye doesn't have to be messy, expensive, or time-consuming. Look how much dye I have on my gloves and on my paper. Virtually nothing. Dyes on nothing but our project. All right, let's hang this up. Give this about an hour to dry. All right, we've given that about an hour. What I'm going to do now is just take a cotton rag, and I'm going to rub this down. There's not, not much left on the surface, but let's just make sure we get anything on that surface rubbed off. There we go. And our top coat's really going to make that look rich and deep. Already a good color, though. Okay, I'm going to clean this up, set us up for our top coat. Close to done. All right, easy cleanup. A funnel will help us get the dye back in the bottle. Add a little bit of a spill here, but you know what? That's not even enough to throw away a cheap piece of paper. Secondly, our daubers, when we use the Pro Dye, we can use these time and again. I'm not super cheap, well, I kind of sort of am, but I hate to throw away a dauber after doing one small project. So again, the Pro Dye, great way to go. Now, with the Pro Dye, though, we do need some ventilation. When we jump over to the Leather Balm, none at all. This actually smells good. So with this, we can always apply this with a dauber. But to me, that puts too much on. It's not an issue for the project. To me, it just seems a bit wasteful. So I'm going to take a cotton cloth and simply dip it, dip it in my leather balm, and we're just going to rub this on. 
There we go. Now we need to force that down into that bend a little bit. All right, so we're gonna jump over to a dry cotton rag. Now, I really just consider this a wet and a dry rag, wet with a balm. But this always freaks me out a little bit because when we start to buff this, it's gonna go very matte. And I always freak out, They're going, oh no, no. But if we give it just a couple of passes, what's gonna happen is we're gonna start to get a really pretty gloss going. Very cool. All right, so I'm gonna buff all the way around on this and we will have a beautiful scabbard. All right, let's buff down at our tip a little bit, try to get across that edge. And there we go. All right, does that not look great? Very cool, nice sheath. All right, let's step over to our quartz now, drop in our Sam Brown, we're done. Now, Sam Brown is nothing but a post. In fact, button stud, button post, Sam Brown, they're all the same thing. I've got a post and a screw back, easy enough to add. But with this, I'm going to add just a little bit of white glue in, this, in the throat of this, just so it doesn't work itself out over time. There we go. Now we're going to take, since we can get our finger in there, but let's do this. Let's take a pair of needle nose lightly on that. And I'm just going to drive that in. There we are. Now with that in, we can put our finger in there and we can hold it and let's just screw this down. Now we can certainly, well, in fact, in this, we can't get a screwdriver in there. We could, but for the most part, you can feel that crank down. That is solid and that is going to be there for years. You know what? Could not be happier with this scabbard. This has come out beautifully. Ease and outcome, that is what we're looking for. Simple to make, and the outcome here, absolutely professional. And our fit, spot on. Very cool. All kinds of ways we can go with this. We've just scratched the surface on creativity. So take that ball and run with it. Now, the amount of tools. We use some tools in this, and at the very beginning, I said, we don't need a lot of tools. Well, that is exactly right. About half the tools we use, we don't need. But the point is, each tool takes your work up one more step. All right, one more point, big reveal here. Say you've got a boarding cutlass, a saber, or a falchion, curved blade, what are we going to do? Well, I feel kind of stupid here because it took me forever to figure this out. We don't do anything different. We just put that on a curved form. <laughs> That's all it is, and it's going to be beautiful every time. You know what? I hope every sheath, every scabbard you make is spot on perfect. Good luck with your projects.